these stage two decks. He likes playing Greninja, so using those um, Feather Arrow style abilities to spread on the perfect targets is definitely, uh, you know, it suits his brain. All right, so looking at Michael Prowant's prizes, he does have that one Macargo in there, but with Gladian in his deck, it's not really too much of a worry. Oh Although... boy, rough for Burt, two Rowlets in his prize cards. We've already mentioned Don Kettler's name today. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that that's not going to be the case, but two Rowlet is never something you want to see uh, inaccessible to you that early, as well as a couple, uh, or at least one Nest Ball as well. So it's going to be awkward for him to get his setup. Oh, poor John is never going to live that down. And it looks like Michael Pramot will start the action for us, starting with that Articuno GX. Yeah, Articuno GX. It's not particularly in here intended for the matchup, but there are so many special energies, and also in a pinch, he could deal with something like a super boost later down the line. But for now, he's just going to go for the uh, Ultra Ball, going for that Tapu Lele, going for the Professor Realms Lecture, getting down uh, a couple Zerua, and he's also eyeing up that Ditto while he can. We did see that the Mag Cargo is in his prize cards, at least one of them, so that's got to be something he's got an eye on. But as soon as you start seeing a low and Vulpix, you want to get that Ditto down before you start seeing Decidueyes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and granted, this deck could literally be anything, but with these players so far deep in the tournament, you pretty much know what everyone's going to play. I would assume that these two would have already figured out what they're playing. They would have at least sat next to one another yeah. or uh, heard from a friend who's been in a similar position that they happen to play against them, something like that. And when they are big name players, you sort of you always sort of cast an eye over to what they're playing to see if uh, you're on a similar wavelength or if you'd like to face them or if you would uh, overall. So uh, yeah, good start from Pram here. Yeah, even has that Timer Ball in his hand for next turn to go with that Zorark GX as well as a Cynthia. Pretty much ideal turn here for Michael Pramwat, except for the Articuno start. Yeah, that's the only real hiccup for him, but eyeing up double color synergy, and it looks like Cynthia may be the only uh, supporter in his opening hand here. He does also have oh, Ultra Ball no. available to him. But he has the three Decidueye GX <laughs> in his hand. That is not something you want to Ultra Ball away, so he opts just to play the Cynthia. Yeah, straight up Cynthia, hoping to find some uh, Nest Balls and other basic Pokemon here, because this is pretty slow. He can end his turn on Beacon, but it's really not the board state that we're looking for. Yeah, and that is the one thing that's very important with these Decidueye decks that don't play uh, Professor Elm's Lecture and opt for the more ball engine. Like uh, Fabrizio said, he just doesn't want to rely on Tapu Lele GX early game because it's just two free prizes for your opponent. Ooh, and he's only able to find one Rowlet. Uh, he opts not to attach that Grass Energy either, and he's just going to end his turn on a, a Beacon here. Unable to find anything like Brooklet Hill for any supplementary basics. So it's a pretty slow start from Burt here. And this is exactly what Pram is looking for, trying to capitalize on a slightly slow start here. Yeah, I think he might actually just be wanting to look for a couple Rowlet with this beacon. He has that timer ball in his hand. Oh, but yeah, that's right. He has two Rowlet prize. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, he'd be definitely <laughs> going for those. But uh, because he has two Vulpix on the board, he can search out that Alolan Ninetales quite freely. You'd also kind of assume that Pram is going to try and tackle that Rowlet if possible, uh, seeing as though he already needs to move his Articuno out the way. So that's got to be what's on Pram's mind here. Yeah, playing Timer Ball. Such a hit or miss card. Let's see. And oh it double boy. heads. I'm telling you, Michael Pram want. <laughs> <laughs> Round <I> nine. <laughs> double heads. That is exactly what you're after. He's able to grab himself one Zoroark. And uh, seeing as though that Mag Cargo is prized, he's going to go ahead and grab two of them straight out the gate and that means with the one in his hand he's going to get a lot of trades going here and let's see if he can capitalize on this turn much more <laughs> he is holding a Cynthia and he's actually going to go to play it uh, Pram does play a few physical switch cards so he's not fully reliant on using a Guzma this turn yeah, exactly and this is a deck that you don't really want to take those fast prizes granted it would be pretty nice to take that prize on Rallet, but I think he saw his hand and he's like I'm going to need the double colorless and the Guzma that's a lot to ask for out of just three trades. Yeah. So I, I'd rather just set up my board. I want to play the slow game anyway. Yeah, that's definitely true. And even then, there was just like crushing hammers in his hand. They're not great cards that you want to trade away. And he's drawn straight into a switch. He does have a rainbow energy, so he could settle for a resource management if he really wanted to. But let's see if he can go any further with his deck, because he does have three trades still available to him. All right. Trade number one gets that Lysander's Lab and Plumeria. Plumeria could be a pretty sneaky card in this matchup just because Burt's deck really attacks for two energy attachments. So you kind of set up something on the bench and kind of 
leave something active that you just want to sacrifice, and maybe I'll feather arrow a few times. Yeah, absolutely. So keeping control of those is definitely going to be what Pram wants to do here. He's not drawn into any more energy cards, but he can finish his turn with a resource management if he wishes. He is going to use a switch, get that uh, Articuno GX out of the way, and uh, he can commit the Lysander Labs to the board if he wants to. Also attaches that rainbow, so he can finish off his turn strong with resource management. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you might think it's too early, but it's never too early. Even if he's getting just uh, those Cynthia's back, as we saw Joey, he was so happy getting Cynthia's back into his deck um, because they're such a nice supporter when you do actually gain control uh, that you can just refresh that hand so strong. But instead, he's going to try and uh, still present the Stadium War as an option, as well as getting back that switch, as well as counter catcher. Yeah, uh, and if you think about it, Cynthia is the only draw supporter in these Zora control decks. So getting those back late game is really what you need. Yeah, to keep you going through. We do see Bert here. He's got himself timeable. Gets him one heads. Not as good. That's going to get <laughs> yeah, just the one. Uh, that's going to grab him a Decidueye. He's already holding on to an Alolan Ninetales GX. This could help him get that rare candy if he needs it. Uh, but that's already in the hand as well. So pretty good stuff now. It's just going to be down to him to, again, try and find more basics. So this Alolan Ninetales may be used for things like Nest Ball even to try and get some uh, mudkips going or other, uh, well, we know the round of surprise. That's the biggest headache for Burt right now. Yeah, I think your ideal position in this matchup is what? Just get four Decidueye on board and nothing else? <laughs> yeah, and that's just not possible due to those really awkward prize cards. So we're going to see Burt settle for the uh, Wonder Tag, finding himself a Cynthia here and uh, see if he can develop again, looking for possibly mudkip or something like the Brooklet Hill could be a good out for him to keep developing this board. Yeah, it's Cynthia, just straight consistent draw here. Uh, really the, the best option we have as a supporter in the standard format. I, I think pretty much most decks are playing three to four copies of that card. Yeah, absolutely. It's just so important to have access to now that we have lost, you know, the forever staples of um, Professor Sycamore, Professor Juniper, and N. Those are finally, finally rotated. So Cynthia is our savior of the format to help us remain consistent and draw the cards that we want to, as we're going to see once again. But he did commit a fair energy to the bench, and he's also going to finish his turn once again on a beacon, looking to find again a Decidueye GX, and it looks like having the option for another Alolan Ninetales once again. Yeah, and there we go, the beacon for the Decidueye and the Ninetales. It is now Michael Primewant's turn again. We'll see what he can cobble together with the three Zorak GX on his bench. And to be honest, he must know that something's up. The fact that Bert's done this much yeah. beacon work and not got a lot of Rowlets onto the board, he knows that there's something going wrong. He could assume maybe one's prized, two in the best case situation, and uh, he might just start going aggressively to Guzma out the Rowlet and deal with it. And if he can do it alongside discarding an energy on the in the back, that could be the ideal option for him. Yeah, so we look at his hand. There is no Guzma present, but he does have that crushing hammer. He's going to go ahead and fire that off. He'll flip the die again ahead. He's doing. He's been all sixes. <laughs> he's been running hot on the sixes. Don't play Monopoly against Pram. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's got that double colors. He's eyeing up once again. He could Ace Roller up his Orangaru if he really needed to move out the way and start pressurizing the Alolan Vulpix. And that's actually what he's going to go ahead and opt for here, smelling that he can. You know, deny but much more setup because there's just too many routes in the prizes. He's going to go ahead and ride his beating and start the pressure of his own. Yeah, and it uh, essentially negates the feather O damage that Bert placed last turn on the Ranguru, kind of hoping to steal a quick knockout. So it's over to Bert. Uh, there's the first prize taken from Pram. Not quite able to access the Mag Cargo, but Bert does commit a double colorless to the active, so he's going to be doing an energy drive at the end of this turn. He's also able to find himself that Alone in Nine Tails from the Beacon last turn. He's going to help him get out a, another Nest Ball, finally trying to get that Swampert online, I would imagine, as well as getting a rare candy here to get a second Decidueye onto the board. He's really going to need these for the pressure throughout the game, as Pram is so efficient at removing all the energies from Burt. It's going to be down to the Feather Arrows to help him conclude the game. Yeah, and uh, we saw this a lot with... Uh, Natalia when she was playing against the Zora control deck where her Swamperts kept getting brought up and that eventually just led to the game. 
where Bert has that playability where, okay, yeah, I could, you could leave the Swamp Bird active. I don't care. I'm still going to do like 40 to 60 damage every turn. Mm -hmm. Definitely the case. So we do see Rare Candy into Decidueye number two, but is also holding on to Choice Band. But of course, there's Lysander Labs in play right now. So he's going to settle for one Decidueye Feather Arrow to the active, one onto a Bench Zoroark and an Energy Drive to put uh, this Zoroark up to 100 damage here, setting him up quite nicely if he wants to, and really putting Pramor in the situation where he has to either use Acerola once again or Max Potion. There is the first trade. There is a ton of hammers in his hand, Crutching Hammer, Enhanced <laughs> Hammer. Yeah, that is the name of the deck. He's also picked up a Pal Pad now if he wants to try and recycle uh, the Acerola that he used last turn or any other supporters available to him. Uh, before he continues his trade-offs, but he's actually going to fire off a, a Team Skullgrunt here and see that Burt actually has none currently in his hand, but it does help him you know, map out his turn. You still gain a lot of information, so although it feels like an awkward whiff, it's still a nice thing to know what your opponent's up to. Yeah, which is pretty insane because Pokemon in general as a game hasn't really been focused on that. Like uh, Our hands change so much through supporters, and Pokemon abilities and things like that, that it doesn't really matter if you know what your opponent has. <laughs> uh, but when you're playing a deck this controlling, that's everything. Uh, we do need to see him put one counter on that Orangru. There we go. And he's going to pay retreat out of his Zoroark that uh, has a lot of damage, and he's not able to heal off any of that. Uh, so he's just going to have to uh, be content with the resource management. Before he does that, he is going to use the power pad, so that's probably what he's going to resource management back, uh, because it is such a useful tool for him. And uh, here we do see putting down some... Uh, well, he's just shuffling in from the power pad, putting back the Acer Roller and likely just a Cynthia uh, before he rounds out his turn once again with resource management. I think it was Skullgrunt. Oh, uh, boy. Acer Roller. Yeah, good shout there. <laughs> Removing energy is definitely going to be the, uh, the out, the win condition for Pram. Well, I think Skullgrunt is probably the best card positioned against a card like Decidueye GX, uh, especially when their biggest thing of getting back their energies is Hollow Hunt GX. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'll put three double colorless in my hand. All right, I'll discard two of the double colorless. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely going to be the case. As you mentioned, that GX attack is going to be used for Burt to try and you know recycle the most important cards. So if Michael always has the option to deny at least some of that, it's going to be a big deal for him. So... It's another resource management from Michael, and we turn back over to Bert, who actually draws into a double colorless energy here. Yeah, uh, just hiding on top of the deck like he planned it uh, to <laughs> combat that Team Skullgrunt. Yeah, completely played around it, and Bert now doing some Feather Arrow math with his fingers, figuring out if it's worth trying to put damage anywhere else, and he's just going to place one Feather Arrow once again on the active, one onto another Zoroark, and he's going to hand it over, playing that DC a little bit slow here, being a little casual, he is holding from Guzma as well, so uh, he's just trying to wait for his chance to strike. Yeah, and that's where this Zorak deck really takes a lot of skill to play. Uh, essentially, you have to guess when your opponent is going to do things like hold their energy in their hand or play it down. Like So we saw uh, Pram use that Team Skullgrunt last turn, sees his hand, so he knows pretty much the entire hand, but now you have that one card, and that's the double colorless. And in a few turns, maybe Pram decides to Skullgrunt again, but maybe it's too late because Bird actually attaches it. Yeah, it's going to be a really nice sort of tightrope to walk. It always feels risky not getting any value out of the double colorless, knowing that it could go at any point. But because he played it kind of casually, um, he might be able to get away with it for at least this one turn as Pram is eyeing up the Acer Roller for his supporter. He still has other trades available to him as well. Uh, here we do see, once again, he's going to move his Orangru out of the way, bring up the undamaged Zoroark, and continue to pressurize Burt here uh, by going, once again, for Riotous Beating at the end of this turn. Just for 100, uh, 100 damage here. He's been chipping away quite nicely, using resource management when he needs to get back any of those energy um, you know, removal cards. Burt's got that Ace of Rider in his hand, and Pram did know that from the Team Skullgrunt, but... Again, forcing Burt to play some cards at this point. Yeah, that's, that's really just what you have to do, especially because if you sit back and do nothing, eventually Feather Arrow is going to take over the game. Definitely going to be the case. But once again, eyeing up that double colors energy as he does promote now uh, a Decidueye GX. He's also got that Ultra Ball in his hand. 
Um, trying to get that Swampert into the game is always risky because it can be the biggest stall target out there. Uh, but as we've already mentioned, it can also help him draw cards. But once again, but happy to go slow here, using both Feather Arrows onto that Zoroark. Two of them getting heavily damaged at this point, and he's going to just pass it over to Michael again. Yeah, and we'll have to see. Michael opted not to play down that Oranguru last turn, kind of saving it from uh, uh, the 40 damage from Feather Arrow. It's definitely a game plan that Bert's gone for. He's decided to do that Feather Arrow two times to the Oranguru, and Michael both times has responded with an Acerola. He's not happy about that Oranguru getting into range. Uh, so definitely something that both players are conscious of. And this turn we're going to see Michael pick up all of his prize cards, not because he's won the game, but because he's using a Gladion. Yeah, Gladion, one of the weirdest supporters <laughs> yeah. to come out in the last few sets. Look at your face down prize cards, put one of them in your hand, and then shuffle Gladion into your remaining prize cards. Well, when there's a big card like Max Potion hiding in the prizes, it's definitely worth picking out with Gladion, so it does give you that extra little defense mechanism from uh, playing some of these crucial one-offs. You can still access them with Gladion, and uh, you can see he's eyeing up the Max Potion. Doesn't necessarily need to play it this turn, but he felt like he had sort of a free turn to get it, so that's going to give him the outs for the future turns, whilst once again putting pressure on... Uh, one more time with Riders beating, 120 damage onto this Decidueye, again, forcing Burt to act. Yeah, uh, meaning just a pretty perfect two-hit knockout here for Michael Pramwa if nothing happens to that Decidueye in the active spot. We do see a Tapu Lele come down, Wonder Tag searching Burt's deck for a supporter. I don't really know what he can go for here. It might have to be a Guzma just to move his own Decidueye out the way, but it looks like he's also eyeing up Cynthia. The one thing he can't really afford is these Decidueyes going off the board because we know there's a couple Rowlets prized and he needs this damage to keep racking up turn by turn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this might be one of the games we see Michael Brownwalk tape this deck and actually maybe win by prizes. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the case. It could happen. Uh, it's always a factor in Pokemon. Prize cards are always something that you need to keep an eye on. Bert going to fire off two Feather Arrows, going to commit a double colorless energy to that Tapu Lele as well as a Choice Band. And it uh, looks like he's eyeing up Guzma as well here. guzma up a damaged Zoroark. Because of that replacement stadium, the Choice Band finally is live for Bert. And he's able to take two prizes here. And he accesses two Rowlets. That is huge. Oh, man. That is exactly what Bert wanted from the prizes. Now, if that Decidueye GX goes down on the bench, he'll be able to eventually replace it. Oh boy, that's got to be a huge sigh of relief for Bert. That is, you know, whenever you look through your deck that first time and see that you have awkward prize cards, the one thing that you're just hoping for with it, all your worth is just that you can get them early. And with that big uh, Zorark knockout that he's been planning this whole time, just drips and drabs here and there with damage counters, uh, he's finally been able to take that knockout. And um, now he has access to plenty more Decidueyes throughout the game. Michael responding quite rapidly here. He's got the counter catcher. He can deal with this one Decidueye GX, and he's even got his supporter to boot. So he's really uh, putting the pressure back on Bert once again. Yeah, also getting down that Slugma, hoping to get the Macargo from the prizes this turn. Such uh, a big deal to guarantee yeah, those another cards. another heads. Yeah, they're, <laughs> like you said, guaranteed. <laughs> And uh, he replays the stadium, he removes the energy, he used the counter uh, catcher, he's still got his supporter for turn if he wants to. He's going to use Team Skullgrunt here to see if there's anything else fishy going on in Bert's hand. He's going to see the bad news that there are two Rowlets that's just yeah. come out of the prize cards. And uh, that's going to be a little bit awkward for him to try and navigate around. But at the very least, Michael can level up the prize trade with a big knockout of a Decidueye here. That'll be important if he gets that Macargo. It does not look like it's still in the prize cards. The Gladian shuffled the Macargo up to the very top. <laughs> That's just typical, isn't it? He, he at the very least did get that Gladian straight back. So he can, if he really wants to, go for a Gladian again to try and get it out. Uh, whether or not Bert will allow him the time to do that is another question. Uh, Bert is going to play down those two Rowlets that he's only just got from the prize cards. He's also picked up a Rescue Stretcher, which is definitely something that he'll eye on later because there are, you know, there's at least one Decidueye in there. But for this turn, at the very least, he's going to fire off a Cynthia. Once again, looking for some more energy cards and for some rare candies for the future. Yeah, rare candies for the future to try to get those Decidueye GX in play. Remember, that's really his only game plan against a control variant like the Zorark deck. Uh, just, all right, I'm going to try to get these guys that do free damage. And if you try to control me, then I'm eventually just going to win. 
with yeah. Feather Arrow, but yeah. then if I force you to start attacking, then I can kind of play my own game. Yeah, it's quote-unquote infinite damage given enough time. So he's hoping that, hey, I, I can never get control out of the game. I can Feather Arrow as much as I want. It's just that Pram can have that full control aspect, but at the same time, he's going to pressurize with prize card racing as well. So he does try and uh, make it awkward for Bert throughout the entire game. As you can see him riffling through his hand, he's got a couple of red candies in there. He's got counter gain, double colors energy, max potion. He's set up for a good couple turns here as long as he can find something like timer ball um, to get into some more deciduous here as he's just used that one feather arrow on a slugma and sent it back over to Pram. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing about this deck, the Zorak GX control deck is it can flip the game plan on a dime. Just, all right, I'm going to control, control, control. Oh, you finally start to, like, counter my stuff? All right, I'm going to attack, attack, attack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it can uh, react to any situation. We do see Pram. He's going to go for that Team Skull Grunt. Does catch one of Burt's double color synergies. And uh, he's going to continue the onslaught with Riotous Beating here because his hand is absolutely stacked with energy denial cards. He's got a bunch of crushing hammers. He's got enhanced hammer, plume area. He's got all the options he needs. So when you don't need to resource management, you can keep putting the pressure on uh, with Riotous Beating. And it forced Bert to use an ace. Oh, he used a max potion. He did draw into a fair energy, it looks like. Was able to commit a counter gain and is now able to fire off his first snowy wind, as well as the feather arrow, continuing to uh, pressurize the slugma. Yeah, uh, spreading damage, 70, 30, and then of course the feather arrow on the slugma, meaning if Michael Paramount does not gladiate oh for the cargo this turn, uh, Slugma is going to get knocked out no matter what. Feels good to be Michael Pramwatt, man. He just hit another heads on Crushing Hammer. No big deal whatsoever. You thought I was kidding, <laughs> but he he's basically like 80% luck. This is the time to do it, man. He's got the Guzma as well to boot. Looks like he's going to try and uh, pick off the Mudkip here. He's bringing up the Tapu Lele, it looks like. He's got himself a Rainbow Energy, which he could use to pay retreat if he really wanted to. Or he could even use... Uh, Tapicure GX this turn, which is exactly what he's doing, Ooh. trying to undo some damage from Burt while he's whiffing on his own heal cards. Yeah, uh, Tapu Lele GX using Tapu Cure. Uh, not something you see too much. Uh, I've seen a few of that play in a deck like Groudon and Expanded, but yeah. really proving fruitful here, saving that Slugma for at least another turn. Yeah, and that's really vital for Michael. He's healed that Zoroark. That's out of range from Burt now. Uh, he's brought up a Mudkit, which is going to be another pain to move out the way. Um, the Tapu Lele can be easily Acer Rolled on his own just because it's already got one damage counter on it from Rainbow Energy. So he can go straight back into this Riotus Beating Onslaught. But now his stuff is all uh, free of damage. And Big Archibald here getting rid of energies willfully is always something that you sort of cringe at when you're up against a control deck. Oh no, it looks like that was the last grass energy Bert had access to as well, uh, not with, withstanding the super boost energy. Yeah, the super boost energy is his last line of defense to try and use uh, Hollow Hunt if he wants to. It looks like he's going for the Swampert here. He's going to rare candy into that Swampert. He's going to Man, is he going to power draw away the double colors here? He is. He's, He's going for right. broke. Uh, I'm not going to play any more energies. That's what it's going to. That's what it's going to be. I'm just going to try to get these decidui in play. And boy, did he! He got himself another rare candy. There's another decidui, and he's going to go for two feather arrows onto the back, and uh, send it over. It looks like there's not much else he can do. Um, Man, this is such intricate and interesting play from Burt. The great thing is, with the Swampert in the active, it's always threatening that Super Boost to burst out a big two-prize knockout, especially on something like a Tapu Lele GX. So Burt is threatening here, even with a Swampert with zero energy on board. Yeah, uh, it's pretty insane. And the damage adds up, especially with the Sidueye. We could see a turn where if Michael Paramount chooses to bring up a Zorak GX and attack with it, we could see a uh, rare candy decidui super boost energy take a clean one hit knockout <laughs> on a Zorak. Absolutely. There's not even a Lysander Labs in play, so things like Choice Band are always options as well. So a uh, Swampert can just clean sweep if uh, it's not unchecked. But obviously, Pram's hand is full of energy denial cards, so that's never going to be the case. As we do see Pram, he wants to recycle some cards. He's going to attach that second rainbow energy to his Oranguru. He's also going to Ace Roller up that Slugma, really trying to preserve that as much as possible. Completely take it off the board at this point. And uh, 
He's going to once again try and look for his discard pile. Again, he wants to get that pal pad back. Lysander Labs maybe something he looks for, seeing as though choice bands are already on the board. And any other energy removal cards are still things to be aware of, as well as more DC, so he can keep attacking throughout the game. Yeah, and there we go. Putting the exact cards he needs into his deck. Oranguru is such a powerful card in combination with Zorak GX. It's insane. It really is just ridiculous. The sort of downside that was meant to happen with Zorak, but there would be a point where you're running low on cards and you can't trade anymore, but thanks to that Oranguru, you can just continue to draw and draw and it's never going to be a problem for you. We see Bert now. He's going to start putting damage counters across the board and just simply pass it back over to Michael with not much else to do here. But I like these sort of separating the threats right now, trying to put a lot of things in range. Um, because that's got to be what he has to do to try and make it difficult for Michael to heal off all the damage on one target. So he needs to represent damage all over the board. As Michael is literally down to those three cards because he's used that one trade, drew into Max Potion and Pal Pad. So his entire deck now is just uh, just what he Aranguru'd last turn. He has Pal Pad, he has other options if he wants to go deeper, and he could end his turn on a resource management if he wants to. But instead, he's going to... Guzma up that Dartrix. He doesn't want any more Decidueyes hitting the field and uh, try and take another prize here, taking him down just to two remaining. Yeah, uh, six free damage counters a turn is definitely not what you want to see from your opponent. And two prize cards remaining, that's a knockout on that Tapu Lele GX in just a couple turns, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he's really putting the squeeze on Burt. He's trying to be, you know, delicate and slow and putting the damage counters in the right places at the right times. But now, Burt's in that situation... It's almost panic stations because Michael is so close to actually closing the game that Bert might have to start using power draw for some more important resources here to find that super boost and really press Michael. Yeah, and that's one thing that separates this uh, Nine Tails Swamper Decidueye deck uh, from Michael Paramount's Zorak deck is that Oranguru as well because Bert would love to put back Acerola, put back a Max Potion, put back a few energies. Uh, but he doesn't really have the luxury. His only reliance on that is Hollow Hunt GX, and with no grass energy left except for that super boost, it's going to be pretty hard to do. We're going to see Bert use his rescue stretcher here, getting back two Rowlets and a Dartrix. He wants that back into play as soon as possible, and uh, he's also still got power draw available to him, but it looks like the cards in his hands are both very valuable, Max Potion and Guzma, so he may not want to commit them. Instead, just a couple more Feather Arrows going across the board, one onto a Zoroark and the other to the active, and he's just going to send it back over to Michael. Yeah, and this is really just setting up that big super boost knockout turn. Uh, really hoping to draw into it as his hand is kind of anemic for that right now. But with power draw and a draw for the turn, it, it's pretty possible. Yeah, his deck size is thin as well. Uh, Michael's is, you know, the thinnest of them all, but. Uh, Bert's getting to the end of his resources as well. So Michael using the pal pad in this case so that he doesn't actually deck out. Uh, he's going to get himself back a Team Skullgrunt and an Ace of Roller, shuffle those up, and uh, let Bert cut if he wishes, <laughs> trying to randomize it. And uh, we're actually going to see the trade here. He wants to access one of these cards this turn. Uh, yeah, he knows that Bert's been holding on to stuff. So. Probably the Ace of Roller. Yep, just going to Ace of Roller up a Articuno GX here. That means he has plenty of answers to any super boost shenanigans that go down. Uh, he's also going to max potion off four damage counters. He could pay retreat on his Zorak if he wants to and just use resource management to end off his turn. Back to the control mode for Michael. Yeah, and that's what this deck does best is switching on a dime, uh, reacting to what your opponent plays, and then trying to decide, okay, well, what do I need to do from here to take the game? We are going to see a rescue stretcher before anything else. Going to put three Pokemon... Uh, back into the deck, it looks like a Zerua, a Slugma, and a Tapu Lele GX. That gives him plenty more options to play with. And uh, to round out this turn, we are going to see the resource management. Um, looks like he's eyeing up the Max Potion, the Double Colors Energy, and that Pal Pad once again. Yeah, but every turn he's doing this, uh, Bert gets a little bit more damage in play, uh, moves a little bit closer to maybe stealing this game. Definitely true. Uh, let's see if he drew into... Wow, he drew into a Lily here. So that's going to give him some cards. Here comes Super Boost. He's also going to Power Draw and uh, get rid of another useless card. Can he get another Rowlet down? He does have 
Rowlett in his hands, so trying to threaten as much as possible here. We know that Michael put back that power pad. He could always use uh, wow, Skullgrunt, so here he goes. Ops for the super boost to take the knockout on the Oranguru here. Uh, we were talking about it as a card that could surprise knockout a Zorak GX, but uh, really just valuing not having Oranguru in play for Michael Paramount. He just knows that Michael can always get Skullgrunt, and with a hand size of like six, seven, eight, nine cards that he could have ended up with, Michael was always going to just go for a team Skullgrunt. He's never going to get going to get the value, um, so he's just got to try and take the one prize here, disrupt Michael's flow. Yeah, three prizes to two now, but uh, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle here. Let's see, Michael uh, does have that second Oranguru in his hand. He's got all sorts going on in his hand. Let's be honest. Use, he uses that first trade, gets out the Slugma and that Tapu Lele GX. Um, he's going to use that trade once again. That means that he can get into his pal pad as well as his max potion. And let's see what else he wants to do. He still has crushing hammers that he can start flipping uh, if he doesn't want to spend an enhanced hammer, but he's happy enough to use that at this point. That's going to go into the loss zone, never to be seen again. Um, and uh, he has that skull grunt, which he's eyeing up as well here, trying to really put the squeeze on Burt. Yeah, there we see a Rangaroo come down with double colorless and then a switch to bring it active. And this is another resource management, but first a team skull grunt to see what Bert is working with here. And let's be honest, not much. There's no rare candy currently going on in there, so there's not going to be a Decidueye out of nowhere unless there's another power draw that can finally get it going. But he may also be out of rare candy at this point, so Michael happy enough to uh, max potion on four damage counters because he can, of course, loop that with resource management if he wants to. He also has that power pad available if he wants to pick up some more Guzmas and Acerolas or Team Skullgrunt all over again. These are the things that he keeps recycling um, to give the huge headache here. Yeah, there's a Guzma as well. So, what is it, three cards now in deck and then another resource management, so six total. Yep, that's going to be the way to go. Um, we're going to see, he's going to try and pick back most likely uh, that rescue stretcher. I think there's going to be a point where he has enough cards in his deck that he can start trying to be aggressive once again with Zoroark. I mean, he is closing the game quite nicely with um, resource management, but because of the the looming threat of Mortis Hijuai taking the board, he does eventually want to take some prize cards. So at the moment, he's still just getting the control cards. He's getting the uh, rescue stretcher, the max potion, and all, all these sorts of pieces. But there's going to be a point where he has to start putting pressure on uh, with some Riders beating. It's just not quite at that point yet. Oh, and was that the Dartrix off the top of the deck? I mean, <laughs> granted, he did have an Ultra Ball, but it's pretty good just not to spend resources to get the card you were wanting. Yeah, just getting it raw is always a nice thing to do. Uh, he's going to use two Feather Arrows to put 40 on that Zoroark, and he's just going to pass it over to Michael, back over to him for more difficult decision-making. It feels like uh, he's always the one in the driver's seat. That's what you know about the Zoroark yeah. control deck. He's always the one making every decision. The game goes how he plans. Uh, when you're in this sort of state, you can guarantee cards to the bottom of your deck, re uh, recycle them, guarantee that you can draw into them. And uh, again, looks like he's going to go for a Guzma play on that Dartrix once again. That's probably the most likely option here. Uh, that puts him down to one prize card remaining, and it also means that Burt can't get an extra Decidueye on the board. So he's going to bring up that Zoroark, and uh, he's eyeing up. Uh, right is beating here, and he's going to take that one more prize, and it's still not the Mag Cargo. Uh, but uh, he's really got a good grip of this game at this point, because Burt is out of energy, I believe, at this point, and I think he just has two Feather Arrows each turn, and that's going to be fairly routine for Michael to either keep healing off turn by turn, or simply Right is beating his way to game over a number of turns. Yeah, uh, the thing that happens when you play a deck like Pramawatz is... You're going to have to think <laughs> every single turn. Uh, if you miss a card with resource management, it could screw up your entire game plan. And Bert sees the writing on the wall, scoops up the game, going to game two with just 16 minutes remaining. Yeah, a really impressive win from Michael. Always felt in control. Uh, obviously, the early game prizes were awkward for Bert. It meant that he was limited the amount of decidueyes he could get going ever. But uh, Michael saw the outs and uh, was able to, again, control the game exactly how he wanted to. Yeah, uh, definitely just a 
great player to watch, and especially watch such an, a skill-intensive deck as this Zora Control. Yeah, it can oftentimes be um, tempting to just keep racing for prize cards and uh, keep going. Michael, very cautious, very patient, always resource managementing back in the key pieces so that he would never be caught short against Burt, no matter how he placed those feather arrows throughout the game. Whenever there was a super boost coming down, he was prepared. He always had a team skull grunts, plume areas, a crushing hammers that apparently always hit heads. Like, he's always in a perfect spot against him. Yeah, uh, I mean, his hand the entire game was just crushing hammer, crushing hammer, crushing hammer, enhanced hammer, boom area. <laughs> uh, he was always prepared, especially against a deck like Burt, where it doesn't really play much energy at all. I think a total of eight. Yeah, just eight energy cards, and we saw he had to manually get rid of his own grass energy, so he never even got a hollow hunt turn off. Uh, so that's, you know, all she wrote, really. It doesn't take many enhanced hammers or crushing hammers to end the amount of pressure that can, that can come from Burt's deck outside of Feather Arrows. Yeah, and remember, we saw this Zorak deck before where it kind of stumbles if it doesn't get that Professor Elm's Lecture turn one. So it'll be important to see if Michael Paramount actually has access to it. That's got to be something that Burt is crossing his fingers for. He wants to be aggressive and somehow steal a game two here by uh, getting lots of Decidueyes onto the board early, getting an attack off as soon as possible as well. He's going straight up and uh, using, I think, what was a Brooklet Hill here. Leads on the Lowland Vulpix, which is never a bad thing, against uh, Michael's Ditto, oh. which is the most fragile Pokemon in his deck. And yeah, if you actually look at oh, man. Pramwat's hand, it is it's a Cynthia, a Cynthia and not much else. And nothing else. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we are going to see the Brooklet Hill finding that Mudkip. Ooh, look Bert at has Bert's a hand, lot of way. item cards. There's a Nestful straight off the bat. Yeah, this is uh, two completely contrasting opening starts here. Balls galore for Burt to get as many Pokemon out as possible. And Michael just with that lone, sad ditto with just 40 hit points. Yeah, and there is the Tapu Lele GX Wonder Tag for that Lily. Uh, the turn one supporter of choice for Burt here, opting no Professor Elm's Lecture. So is really kind of... I don't want to rely on Tapu Lele, but if I have to, I'll get it anyway, and it'll be better, because I get to draw eight cards. <laughs> yeah, and this is exactly what we're seeing. He's hoping to try and find uh, more Rowlets here. He already has another Ultra Ball waiting in his hand. He could also be brave and try and get an attachment in, while Pram oh, doesn't wow. have many Zoroks into play. Wow, this Look hand is this. amazing. This is the dream, turn one, for Burt. <laughs> the Lily engine paying dividends. He's got three Rowlets down. He's got that Mudkip down. Alolan Vulpix in the active. And Michael is really in a bad who? spot. Like, that's, that's what I want to know. Like. <laughs> and he's just going to casually pass it over. He's got that Ultra Ball in his hand, waiting Ooh. in the wings. Oh, man. That was an uh, insane top deck from Michael Pramwatt right here. Ultra Ball does give him access to Tapu Lele, which in turn gives him access to Professor Elms. And then he has a Cynthia for next turn. That is a huge sigh of relief from him. I think he's got to be happy with that. He can Ultra Ball away uh, the Palpad and the... Team Skullgrunt, both important cards, but whenever you can get them back, it's never too stressful. And things like Timeable, which, although they're not useful this turn, if he's using Cynthia next turn, uh, you want to use the Timeable first to get lots of Zoroks into play. So uh, you want the immediate cards to still be accessible to you, and then you can get those luxury cards like the Pal Pad and the Team Skullgrunt later down the line. Yeah, to be fair, though, with Bert's hand, I think he might be taking a quick knockout on that Ditto Prism if he finds at least another Decidueye. I think he, no, yeah, he has no Decidueye in hand, but two rare candy. And if he uses that Ultra Ball to get himself a load of Ninetales, for example, he could go for some more ball search cards, maybe rely on Timer Ball a little bit. We'll see how he wants to navigate his turn as Pram does go for that one tag, finding Elm. Just another day in the office. <laughs> Bert wouldn't know a thing that he was really stressing out moments before yeah. drawing into that, uh, that Ultra Ball, he's actually going to retreat out of the Ditto as well and put some damage counters onto this uh, Vulpix with an energy drive. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, Ditto's kind of a liability active. Uh, it's also a liability on the bench too, but it, at least you're able to put some damage on the board, get something going, because as you saw before, Pram actually had to start attacking to try to take the game. Absolutely, and we see the Rare Candy into the Swamper, hoping to get into an even better board here. But does have himself an Ultra Ball. That could get him an alone in Ninetales if he wants to. 
He also has Guzma available, Cynthia. His yeah, hand's he, bonkers. He was opting maybe to discard the Cynthia, but discarding the Guzma seems like the much better play here. That way he can Cynthia and then try to draw on them some more stuff if the timer ball fails. Wow, he's actually opting to get his water Alolan Ninetales out. He's already holding that double colors energy so he can guarantee a knockout on the Ditto. And if this Cynthia brings him any more Decidueyes, he could even start trying to pick off Zeruas if he wants to. Oh, and that's going to be very important, especially if Michael Pramwak does not hit uh, any heads off this timer ball that he has in his hand. Yeah, the timer ball never guaranteed you're flipping two coins. You feel like the odds are in your favor, but it can well, always go against you. To be fair, if you're Michael Pramwak, it's guaranteed <laughs> at least one heads. <laughs> Oh dear, we don't see any rare candies from Bert, so he's just going to close out his turn, taking that cheeky prize with Ice Blade uh, from the water Alolan Ninetales, the unsung hero that sort of... What did I tell you? Look at that. Oh, Two it's heads. It's just so easy for the man. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Two heads from Michael, two Zoroarks. Here we go. His engine's rolling now. That ditto has been knocked out, but he's not stopping. He's got two Zoroarks, Cynthia as well, if he wants to to completely refresh this hand, even Enhanced Hammer to remove the first double colorless of many that Burt plays as he's going for a refresh here for six cards. He could end up drawing, you know, 10 or maybe even 12 if he finds another Zoroark. You know, just 10 or 12, it's fine. We'll see, we'll see. Depends how many other cards he has. He's gonna trade away a Limitation Sableye, it looks like. He gets himself a Crushing Hammer. Cynthia, not too much help right now. He's going to opt to trade away that Cynthia that he's just drawn. Oh, baby. There's Zoroark, going to get rid of the other timer ball. Uh, he does have uh, not many other options here, so he may have to think about using an energy drive. Uh, there is always does have the access to the counter catcher in his hand since he mm. is down a prize now. Instead, he's just going to go for an energy drive on the active, poking it a little bit more, puts it in range of a Rattus beating if he so wishes, whilst also not over committing into an Ice Path GX attack. Yeah, Ice Path is something that a lot of people have forgotten about as a GX attack, and really just in general, uh, this Alola Ninetales has kind of been overshadowed mm -hmm. by the fairy one that came out, but it is a very powerful powerful card on its own. Just the 50 snipe damage combo so well with Feather Arrow, and like you said, Ice Path GX is an insane GX move. Yeah, it forces people to have Guzma at that exact moment, otherwise they can fall prey to it. Also, just the Alone in Ninetales has great typing for certain matchups like Blacephalon, so I'm sure it's seen value for Burt as he's refreshed his hand, got a Decidueye up. Looks like he's opting to commit a Grass Energy this turn, and uh, he's just going to go for some Feather Arrows here to round out his uh, turn. He's got plenty of energy in his hand. That's why you're seeing him oh, get rid of no. them. Plenty of energy in hand, but the top card in Michael's hand is that <laughs> Team Skull Grunt. You know he's eyeing it down. Oh, man. He's also oh, picked up less bringing it allows. to the top. Will we see it? We're going to see some first trades trade. first. <laughs> There's always the temptation to go oh, for no, a Plumeria. He keeps drawing more supporters, too. <laughs> so it's like every card he draws, it's maybe not uh, uh, playing the team's cold run. Wow, we see double colors Aranguru. Those are options for him now as well to round out his turn. Slugma onto the board. Here comes a big oh. team skull grunt. He's, uh, he's spotted it. Here we it. go. Oh, he's oh. going to crushing, uh, crushing Hammer first. He's if he gets ahead us. on this, he'll definitely play the uh, team skull grunt. That's out of play. S see, Heads look at again. that. Heads every time. Man. And then team skull grunt. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Both of those double colas are going to the bin. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll take those. <laughs> how, how about those two right there? Here comes the double colors on the Oranguru. He's going to. Recycle that team skull grunt, no doubt, <laughs> and some other important cards. Maybe the uh, power pad actually that's already in the discard pile. Uh, but that is a huge turn from Michael, taking uh, an energy, or oh, sorry, a grass energy and two double colors off the board all in one go. That's insane. Yeah, and again, the best way for Bert to combat that is the Hollow Hunt GX. But he got his one grass energy taken away. Both the double color list and Team Skullgrunt's going back in the deck. Uh, it's not looking pretty good. That's really rough. And Michael knows that game one was long. Both of the both of the players know that game one went very long. So Michael going for this resource management, making the game go longer, removing all the energy. That's pretty much just the uh, just the squeeze that this Zoroark control archetypes puts on every deck. Yeah, uh, they're really taking best advantage of best two out of three fifty minutes here. Uh, really just 
I'm going to completely dominate you game one. And then game two, it's going to be the same way. Like, I'm eventually going to win, <laughs> but it probably won't finish. Yeah, one long win is pretty much Double all you need a lot of the time. tails, not even that, just snake eyes from Bert here. Oh, man, that is, uh, that's not your best Michael Prammel impression, but that is awkward. Just one feather arrow having to pass it over to Michael, and uh, he's really, once again, starting to get a good grip of this game. Yeah, and... Nothing really but supporters in Bert's hand here. Uh, definitely not what he's looking for. Meanwhile, Pramawant has access to pretty much everything in his deck. That's right. He could ace a roller, so he could move into a Riotous Beating if he wants to take a knockout on the active. If he's so inclined, he could also, once again, try and go for Guzma plays and deal with uh, the Dartrix that Bert just evolved up into and deny um, Bert many Decidueyes. But instead, he's going to go for a Gladion this turn pick himself up the max potion, which we saw him cycle so well in that first game to make it go long. Yeah, first game he actually gladiated for the max potion yep. as well. Yep, he's done the same trick again, get that max potion back, so important to his loop uh, so that he can really make the game just never end for him. And uh, he has that counter catch that he's eyeing up. Uh, checking through the discard pile of Burt, three double colors gone, one grass. He's trying to see how many outs Bert has to move his guys. There is the first trade of the game, discarding Lysander's lab, picking up uh, Professor Elm's lecture, which is an instant discard, and another one, which is probably <laughs> another instant discard. Here comes the Lysander labs, and uh, Pram looking at a glorious hand of many, many options, as always. Um, he's eyeing up what he can take from resource management, it looks like. You don't really want much of this stuff. Like, it's like, I'll, I'll get these cards. I don't really need them, but might as well. Might as well have them. More double colorless energies are always good. Picking up that switch as well. Just some good utility cards for him. Uh, while Bert's not putting on a huge amount of pressure, he's going to commit a counter gain to his Decidueye GX and play a Cynthia here. He was holding on to a rare candy, so he could have potentially gone for a power draw first to try and get Decidueye out with that Swampert, but instead he's going to try his luck at getting uh, nine cards to see if he can get any more Decidueye into play. There's one of them. He's got a Rescue Stretcher as well, so at least a few Decidueye coming onto the board. Yeah, awkwardly having that fairy energy in his hand. A little Ninetales not really even accessible here as an attacker. Does have that super boost off that power draw, though. Here comes Decidueye number two. Uh, he has a Rescue Stretcher, not quite a... Uh, a rare candy from those nine. He's going to attach a fair energy to the active. And uh, let's see where he wants to do these feather arrows. He's going to start scouting his own discard pile here. And uh, it's all looking pretty awkward for Bert once again. Yeah, we could see probably both of the feather arrows come down on that Orangaroo, meaning if Bert gets a third Decidueye next turn, it is a knockout if Michael Paramount does nothing with it. Do you really think that's going to happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see him start to trade. And uh, we know he's already got Acerola in his hand, I believe. Yeah, he's he has Acerola, Max Bush in his hand. He has another Rangaroo. He has another energy. Uh, he, he could play the other Rangaroo down, attach the energy, Acerola, bring it up, and then just rinse and repeat. Let's just think of a card. It's in his hand at this point. His hand size is so large. He's got access to pretty much his entire deck at this point. And uh, it's down to him to decide what are the best ones to keep, what are the best ones to get rid of with more trades, and uh, what are the best ones to recycle uh, with Oranguru. We're going to see the first Crush and Cabot here. He's had an insane hot streak with these cards. It is really ridiculous to see so many heads from Crushing Hammer. I mean, look who you're talking about. It's not that ridiculous. There is the Acerola. He's actually going to pick up the Tapu Lele here. And that allows him to go for a counter catcher, moving a Swamper into the active position. And we're going to see a max potion on the active. He has energy to recommit here, so he can keep going for resource management. And yeah, honestly, that counter catcher kind of helps Bert a little bit in a sense of super boost now can take a knockout right away. Uh, meanwhile, the Lola Ninetales GX was just kind of stuck there. Uh, only really being able to attack with double colorless, and he's gone through so many already. Yeah, he's gone through three. I guess the sort of thought process was him putting a rainbow on his own Oranguru meant that a uh, Ice Blade plus the Feather Arrows could have dealt with his Oranguru all at one time, but you're right, the Super Boost could also be committed. 
and could deal with Zoranguru, but it's never really a problem if Michael oh, just yeah. drops one <laughs> prize with a super boost because that's like the big swing card that Bert's looking to use to the fullest effect. And if Pram can force him to use it on a non-GX, he's happy with it too. Yeah, and it looks like time is dwindling down here. Less than a minute left to go in round nine and almost for sure just going to have Michael Pramwat advance 1-0 into day two. We're going to see a Guzma getting that Decidui into the active position. He's eyeing up his discard pile as well. So has he commit his super boost here just to um, use Hollow Hunt GX? I wonder what he's eyeing up here from his discard pile. Maybe he's looking for his own rescue stretcher. Oh no, he has committed the super boost energy this turn. Looks like he's going for that big uh, razor leaf for 90 on the active. Uh, it was good while it lasted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got to say. Uh, there's so many energy denial cards in Michael Pramwatt's hand. Yeah, that's gone. That, that's definitely a card that's no longer there. Uh, Pram is going to go for a trade first. He's going to trade away a Zerua as well. And... Uh, He's also drawn into a low and muck. I can't imagine that being too helpful here. He's going to go ahead, fire off that uh, enhanced hammer. A low and muck could also be hitting the incinerator here. He's actually going to get rid of uh, that as well as a Tapu Lele with an Ultra Ball, just so we can see what he has accessible to him. It also allows him to shuffle the deck. His yeah. resource management to uh, some important cards to the bottom. Using an Ultra Ball means that he could still access them with his final trade. Yeah, that's uh, one of the combos that you see in this deck uh, paired with McCargo and its smooth over ability. Uh, although Pramwat, these two games, has not needed it at all. So it looks like our timer has run down. We'll get confirmation to see if time is actually called in the game. But like I said before, this Pramwat is in complete control. And eventually it looks like he would just win like he did in game one if there, this was untimed. Yeah, this is the thing with the Zorark control archetype. It has some great inevitability to it. I believe players are just getting confirmation now as Michael does go for the Wonder Tag to find that Acerola. He's going to pick up that damaged Zorark, go into his uh, Oranguru, and he may be uh, replaying down once again that counter catcher, bring up that Swampert once again. That hefty retreat cost super boost is now gone. It's no longer a threat. And uh, Michael did actually miss a max potion. Uh, but uh, he can oh, still man. end his turn on a resource management. That guy's never lucky. How brutal. <laughs> some people have all the luck in the world, and then just sometimes you miss Max Potion. Damn. So there we do see he's going to recycle that Acerola, Enhanced Hammer, and whatever else, whatever else he wants to at this point. But we'll be able to take one prize if he wants to on the active with uh, Feather Arrows, but it does seem to be a bit of a lost cause at this point. He's going to try his best, continues to power draw. There's his last double colorless energy. Not really any viable attackers to use it with. He could slap it onto that Swampert, which he's gone for, and uh, all the Feather Arrows onto the active. There goes Oranguru getting knocked out. There's a prize for Bert. But what else can he do here? Uh, pass. <laughs> Two cards left in deck as well, I believe. Two cards. It's a Lily and a Brooklet Hill. Those don't sound like winning cards. Oh, and then a Skull Grunt here as well. Pramwat could just get rid of every... Oh, a Tails! Michael Pramwat flipped the Tails on Crushing Hammer. Two Tails Two. in a row! When they don't matter. <laughs> That's his fourth Crushing Hammer. Wow. <laughs> oh, never lucky. <laughs> it all balances out <laughs> in the end. It's the law of averages. He just saved it for the end. Yeah, that's what you want to do, right? <laughs> that's really, really insane. That's so funny. Uh, he does have the... Uh, I don't even think he has Plumeria available to him at the moment. This double colorless may actually survive four crushing hammers. <laughs> wow. Uh, what am I saying? Of course it's in his hand. <laughs> it's always in his hand. <laughs> uh, he has the other Oranga if he wants to. He's actually going to attach a rainbow. Well, he's considering what to do here. Yeah, it has literally every option in his deck in his hand right now. Plumeria away. Team Skullgrunt, as well as uh, a Guzma. Get rid of that double colorless on the fifth attempt. This one's guaranteed, at least. Uh, there's the resource management. Double colorless coming back down, back into the switch. Monkey's back into the active. Uh, and once again, we're going to see that resource management. Is he going to believe in the crushing hammers again? 
Yeah, it looks <laughs> like it. Three Crushing Hammer go back into the deck. He believes. Power draw. Power Bert draw <laughs> draws his whole deck and concedes. Michael Pramwatt moving into day two with a 6-1-2 record here. And doing it in style. He really did pilot that deck flawlessly. He really did make the most out of every card he had. Traded, all, traded away the bad ones. Kept as many options open as possible. So it made it that Bert... You know, whatever he did do, you know, he was doing his best in every situation, trying to play his energy cards cleverly, trying to make the most out of all of the attackers that he had available to him. But Michael was able to attack energy from his hand uh, on the ball.